Okay, so gonna do try to do a quick tutorial on color for you. Um, I got two different situations to show you in which we're gonna work with a little bit of color. One is uh, this is Mama, and she's hanging out outside by the gate. And then this is a green screen shot that I used for um, product review for the Mi Photo tripod that you recommended. Fantastic tripod. Unfortunately, I forgot to buy it through your link. I bought it off eBay. It was a little bit cheaper. Sorry. I'll get you next time. Um, but either way, these are two different shots um, that need different kind of color. Um, and these are shot um, on flat. Well, I shoot basically 90% of the time. Well, the, with the Mama shot, it's shot flat. So my settings are... Um, hold on real quick. My sharpness is at zero. Um... My contrast is at negative four, my saturation's at negative two, and my color tone is at zero. Um, I shoot most of my video flat, uh, and then I use it so I can change the color in editing. I also shoot my photo flat. I'm not sure if that's the best idea. I mean, you've seen my pre-shots and my post-shots, so um, that's what I do, and then I alter the color afterwards. But anyway, so um, right off the bat... Again, we're in Final Cut 10, and a couple things you want to notice in here is I've opened up the viewers. So these are your um, your keyers, your your graphs, your your histograms, all those different things, and they're up here in this section where I'm sh uh, it says hide video scopes. So if you go to that button and then you click and you go show video scopes, or if you hit Command 7, um, that window will open for you. So uh, the first one that I'm going to go over is the most important one, and that's your waveform and your Luma. So it's your Luma waveform monitor, um, and this shows you your IREs as far as um, the exposure of light starting down here at zero IRE, um, going, which is true black, and then all the way up to 100 IRE, which is true white. Anything over, this, is, this range is called broadcast safe, um, so you always want to keep your values between zero and 100. If you if you peek above them and blow them, sometimes it's okay. Some people's style is that way, um, you know, but in basic uh, basic color, you want to keep it in broadcast safe range. Again, this clip I shot flat, uh, and then this shot I shot in portrait mode because I wanted to um, maintain skin tones, and it also highlights the greens a little bit better so that it's easier for keying, which I'm also going to get into real quick. So, uh, okay, so first shot um, with Mama hanging out by the fence. Uh, as you can see, this shot is maxed out right now as far as your whites, and this graph right here represents the image in waveform. Um, so right over here on the left is this area. You can see the dog and the fence post, and it, it represents an area that is uh, dimly lit and dark, which represents these areas, which goes up to a well-lit area, which goes up to the pole. But it's not out of um, range, and it's that area is available to be manipulated. However, in this section where you see um, where the, the light broadcasts up to 100 IRE represents these sections between these poles. And in that area, if I enhance the whites, as in called raising the whites, um, you're going to get blown out areas and you're going to lose detail. As you can see, I'm clipping in a couple of these areas right around here, which means I've already lost some detail, but it's really not too dramatic and the shot is usable. You know, it's just a throwaway shot I just did outside like 10 minutes ago. So, uh, so we're going to go ahead and manipulate that. Also, since I shot flat, you'll notice that the greens, um, they're there, but they don't really pop. Uh, the wood and everything like that is just standard muted color. So I'll show you the before and the after. So the first thing you're going to want to do to alter um, your your color settings is in your in your inspector window over here on the right you have your correction you have your color tab and then you have correction one so you can go ahead and click correction one and that's going to bring up color uh, in final cut seven color is a separate program in final cut x they've integrated it into the program and it comes um, along with the purchase of the program which i highly recommend again uh, so here you have color. You have your three basic color options. You have exposure, which is the first one uh, set, and then you have your color and your saturation. Um, this is an art form. Uh, it's really, there is no exact right answer when it comes to color. It's your own personal choice. Some people are always, like my, my buddy next door edits, he's always heavy on black and greens. That's just his style. So any video he shoots, he goes heavy on blacks and greens. I try to keep things pretty neutral to real life with a little bit of enhancement towards saturation because I've noticed that as a trend on social media that people are more um, 
more apt to watch something that's more saturated and has saturated colors. I'm, I'm not sure why. Some of the most uh, popular YouTube channels have highly saturated thumbnails um, and things of that nature that keep the viewer's attention. So either way, uh, back to this. We're going to alter this. So also, as you can see, um, as I run my mouse, my inspector across this clip, you can see that the light is altering, and that's because I'm outside. There's color. I'm moving the camera a little bit. So those graphs change um, throughout the thing. So if I'm going to alter the blacks in this shot, I basically want to find an area where they're at their depth and they're not going to go too much lower because I want to max them out. And that looks about like that spot right there because right down here at the bottom, um, those, those blacks are pretty low, but I, they can come lower. So they are manipulable. So I'm going to grab my blacks and I'm going to drag them down to, um, well, if it would go, oh, I'm on the wrong, why is it doing that clip? Excuse me. <coughs> clip this one computer is being a little retarded yes okay thank you all right there we go so I'll find that spot again which is right about there and then drag down my blacks so there I mean that's pretty heavy but I mean it's not beyond the realm of real so that's what is realistically within broadcast range and again, it's you're getting some manipulation that's the shot um, so that's bringing my blacks down the second thing you want to do then is drop your mids a little bit um, just so that it makes the shadows come in a little bit more, sharpens the detail. You don't want to drag them down too much. Actually, normally you drag your, drag your mids more than your blacks, but in this situation, I'm only going to drag them a little bit because I did drag my, my blacks pretty significantly. I could contrast that by bringing my blacks up and dropping my mids, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and stay in broadcast safe range. Drop my blacks right about, wow, that's a lot, right about there. Uh, and then again, if I brought my whites up, I'd be peeking past, but it's going to give me some overexposure detail that I kind of like. So that is, you know, an artistic choice that you can that you could do. Um, from there, I'm going to go to color. Some people go color first and exposure afterwards. Uh, personally, I don't. Here, you're basically either warming or cooling a shot. You're either going to, the first step, I always start over here with my whites and work myself to my mids, my blacks, and my global. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Did you give me a glass of water? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, so from here, uh, the first thing I do, again, this shot's pretty warm, but you also have some blue light because it's outside in the sun, um, as we know that it's naturally, naturally blue. So I'm going to drag my whites down uh, to warm the shot a little bit by dragging it into the negative zone. I'm not 100% sure why this works, but this is just the way it is. Uh, and then my second one, if I wanted to add a you know contrast a little blue, I could add my mids and add a little blue or I can contrast the other way basically your whites are going to have the softest effect your mediums are going to have your heaviest effect and then once you get into your your blacks and your globals you're going to drastically change the color of the shot as you can see like that um, and I don't particularly care for that again I try to stay pretty neutral like right there is not too bad you pull it down you're getting into your reds um, you know up there is not too bad maybe I'll add just a drop of that um, and, and there you go. So that's that. And then saturation, you have, again, um, you have your different ranges. <clears throat> again, these should show up below. This is your global. You can basically always drag this up a few percent. And then I always drag this up a little bit. So there we go. Now we've, we've colored the shot a lot better. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll show you what it looks like before and after. <clears throat> So there we go. That's rendered. I'm going to close the viewer so that we get a little bit better look on the image. And then I'm going to turn off the correction. So that was before. I mean, a very muted uh, flat. And then that's afterwards. It's definitely enhancing the colors, enhancing the definition, uh, and bringing it all together a little bit nicer. So let's play that now. A decent shot. So that's, uh, I mean, that's step one in coloring is moving through those three things. Um, now, again, if you want to really get into the different graphs, you can go ahead and go through it, um, you know, the calculation way. So in here, I started with my, um, thank you for that, excuse me. In here, you can change um, your different graphs. If you wanted to, um, you know, analyze your color, RGB Parade shows you uh, a level of those colors and by going to your correction and in your color section you're able to manipulate those and the end result which I did automatically and I should have shown you along the way but it's just I, I kind of just do it now uh, is you want these levels to be basically the same for it to look slightly natural as I said I, I grabbed that global and it is a little bit red there 
So you can see the reds are, are brought up also as it is overexposed in some zones up here in the top part of the picture and giving uh, losing some detail along the neck right there. Uh, you can see that those are going over 100 IRE. And then the last one that's really important is your histogram. Oh, not your histogram, I'm sorry, your vector scope. And your vector scope uh, is good for flesh tones, and I'll show you a little bit more like about that in the next one. Um, and that's right, I'll, I'll explain them again in the next one. So we're going to go back to our waveform, and we're going to go back to Luma. Um, and that's our thing. So again, here at the end of the clip, uh, my blacks could be lower, but at other portions of the shot, I don't want them to go too deep. I mean, the other option is that I could bring it below, and there's some that would be under uh, exposed, and you know, you'd know, you lose some detail. And again, it's artistic choice. So moving on. Um, Next one is this uh, green screen of this handsome young devil, uh, and he's doing a review of a tripod, and as you can see on our waveform monitor, we have a wave representation of the shot. You can see the green uh, represented here between about 35 IRE going across the entire screen. Um, you have some whites represented by this section, my body, which is represented here. Um, and then the whites uh, of the table represented by this graph here. So as you can see, I do have the availability for some manipulation, and I'm going to do that. But this being a green screen shot, um, and again, I shot this on portrait mode, which is not flat, and I've found through many, many, many times of shooting it wrong that portrait mode is the best way to shoot green screen shots. So uh, you don't want to key this before you green screen it. Um, and again, I'm using this as a representation because this is a, um, important for other aspects of coloring and it gets into removing color as well as replacing color because I'm going to be keying out all of this green that um, it's important that I'm going to have to put some of that color back afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and do some um, keying for you. Uh, actually, first, I'm going to go ahead and crop the shot because, as you can see, the exterior of the shot is planned to be cropped. The table stays within the limits of the green. Uh, as does my body throughout the shoot. So on the left, I'm going to drag it in. Oh, God damn it. Pardon me. I have a terrible mouth. There we go. No, oh, you are just a doll today. That one's a little tight. Almost going to lose a corner of the table, but that's okay. No one's really going to notice. So there we go. Um, I could do in the top just slightly, but there's not really any point. I might end up losing my head a bit, but eh, whatever. Make me look shorter. Um, next one is King. So we're going to go down here to King. And we're going to go ahead and grab our keyer. And we're going to drop it right on there. See you later. Okay. Now... Um, now we've dropped up down the background, and now you have a representation of a, this existing shot, and it's rendering here for a few seconds. But uh, again, we've dropped out the green, so that's removed. But we've also, as you can see now, my skin tones are desaturated, um, and I don't look handsome anymore. So we're going to want to go back to our color. <clears throat> and that is also in keying, you always want to go down here to. Um, your, cr your chroma roll off and, and bring that up. It's going to drop your edge. As you can see, all that grayness in the uh, here, hold on, right in this section of the, the around here, um, and the edges of my body, you raise that chroma roll off, and you're going to get sharper edges around your keying, especially in FCPX. Um, Luma roll off sometimes helpful as well, but it's also going to get rid of some distortion and noise um, that might show up during that time. Just something good to do if you're keying. Um, and, but again, getting to color. So then we have this graphic representation. Now we have a lot of black, um, and that's represented by the area that's keyed. So um, before I put my background in, I like to um, to key my skin tones and try to get them right. So my exposure, I'm going to go to, I'm going to bring, um, I can bring my whites up a little bit. And again, see how I'm looking quite pale. I can drop my blacks a bit, and then I'm going to drop my mids a little bit more. Now, color, I'm just going to add a touch. Again, the other guy likes it to look uh, a little bit bluer. It's associated with this channel. And then saturation is really where it's important, especially like I was saying on your um, field reporting video, you're going to want to bring up uh, your global about 8%. And then these, you see my, my lips are getting a little bit red there, so... Uh, extremely right but again maybe that's just something let's just change that. okay there we go uh so there you go that's a better representation and going through rgb parade um you can see now if we get to color that i want to bring those reds down a little bit or either bring my blues up so i could try bringing that up just a bit 
uh, and that's going to even that out, there you go, a little bit more. And as you can see, the three levels are relatively close, a little heavy on the reds because there is some heavy red in this shot um, from this uh, bag right here and my lips. Everything else is very flat and neutral, so that's why that color is being picked up more than anything else and is going to be affected more by the saturation. So that was coloring for that. Um, and, I mean, then you can go ahead and you can go ahead and do whatever, put your backgrounds in, whatever you want to put me. Let's put me... Uh, Put me in front of the sun. There you go. Nice shot. Uh, and I'll close my window. And then there you go. You have your keyed shot. Um, and your color looks pretty good. And that's just a quick tutorial on a couple different situations on grading footage. Uh, if I did, Again, I didn't get into that vector scope too much. I really don't use it that often. Basically, here, let's go up to that before I close out. Um, go settings vector scope here this represents skin tones oh, I got to turn this stupid thing off here this represents skin tones you want this up this bar should normally be close to here and you want it to be going up about 33 percent from the baseline you get up too far and you start to look oversaturated and not human so uh, that's vector scopes so I can close that down <clears throat> So there you go. Uh, there's a quick tutorial on color. I hope this was relatively helpful for you. If you have any other questions, you know uh, where I'm at. Thanks for asking me this one.